came to a court under oath that if you took Game Power Plus away, they'd be deaths. People would commit suicide. And he's got a number of patients on this, teaches at Harvard University in Boston. He said there'd be deaths, there'd be suicides, there'd be hospitalizations. So the experts say, well, this would be crazy. When, when Health Canada was taking Ian Power Plus away, uh, Tony Stefan of True Hope has said under oath that several hundred people just dropped off the program and they never resurfaced. And he estimated there'd be about 50 deaths. Ron Lachaness of the Canadian Mental Health Association, he ran their Alberta branch. Now, for those of you who don't know him, because in Alberta, he's He's known, he's a, he's a heavy hitter. He used to run all of the uh, province of Alberta's mental health programs. This person has been in mental health his whole life. He's an expert. He was running the Alberta branch of the Canadian Mental Health Association. And when Health Canada was stopping access to Empower Plus, he personally told the Minister of Health, there's going to be suicides. Like, stop, are you crazy? And he told the press this. Then after he told the Minister of Health, and he's also told the court under oath, that he got a call from two families telling them about their kids of theirs who had committed suicide because they couldn't access the Empower Plus. He personally told the Minister of Health that. He held press conferences. He held press conferences <coughs> publicly blaming Health Canada for these deaths. And I don't believe a man like Ron Lachaness would do that unless it happened. He said he went to one of the funerals. So I actually believe that there have been deaths caused by Health Canada temporarily restricting a single natural health product for a little less than a year. Now, I could, I could kind of give you stories of other products. I believe if stars hurt, heart drops were removed, they'd be deaths. The list could be long. You could give me products that people rely on for serious health conditions. And my point is, is the government of Canada, Health Canada knows that by criminalizing these treatments, they're going to be removed. And we're pretending there's no health consequence. And to me, that's just, we're getting Newspeak. We're getting George Orwell saying this is for your safety. It's actually exactly backwards that the danger, the danger is removing the products. So <clears throat> we need to um, completely rethink this from a safety perspective. Now, we're going to switch mics. Okay. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Can I unplug that mic for backup? We're just adjusting. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So I'll just talk for a minute and hopefully they'll sort that out. I'm sorry about the crackling. Um, you also need to appreciate that when Health Canada criminalizes a treatment, so in their mind, this is now an illegal treatment, it needs to be criminalized, that their focus is to remove the product at all costs, and they don't take the health consequences into account. I mean, I've given you this uh, EM Power Plus example, but let me share with you some of the things that Health Canada said under oath at the True Hope trial. So they were trying to convict True Hope of selling without a drug identification number. And to do that, they had to put some of the inspectors who were on this, some of the inspectors who were actually turning these shipments away, they had to put them on the witness stand and I get to cross-examine them. So the first one's up on the stand and <clears throat> she's telling us, okay, I actually knew Ron Lachaness was publicly blaming Health Canada for suicides. I know that. So she's agreeing on the stand and she says, you know what? I continue to stop shipments. So can you imagine you're an inspector, a third party, no connection with True Hope, a respected third party organization is blaming suicides on what you're doing, turning shipments away at the border. And she tells us under oath, she continued to stop shipments. She didn't take any steps because she didn't believe and these are her words. The news of suicides was relevant to the investigation. Now I need this word relevant to be burned into your consciousness because I'm going to come back to it. But can you imagine, you're a Health Canada inspector, you're turning product away at the border, you, you're hearing from a credible third party that your actions are causing suicides, and you don't do anything, you continue to turn product away because the news of suicides was not 
relevant. Now, I cross-examined this inspector further. There was this telephone conference call with some Health Canada people, including this inspector, and some people from True Hope. And uh, Tony Stefan of True Hope on this call is also talking about families where there's been suicides. And she tells us, oh yeah, well, I'm, I'm listening in on this call. I, I heard him say that. But there was no response by Health Canada to look into these allegations of suicide. She said, look, at my role was to gather evidence. This is a, a lady who's turning this product away. And in, she tells the court there was no evidentiary value into looking into allegations of suicide, which is the same thing as saying it's not relevant. The next inspector takes the stand. I'm cross-examining him about this letter that was sent. Remember I told you there was this letter with 200 letters attached to it, people literally pleading for their lives, literally. And uh, he says, well, I kind of perused it. I mean, we, it's in his file. <laughs> he goes, oh, but I didn't read it in depth because it wasn't a policy or a directive. Well, so I'm cross-examining him on that, and he agreed with me. And listen to this. If he had a document indicating people were dying, he would ignore it because it's not a policy and it's not a directive. This is a man who is turning shipments away at the border. He would ignore documents indicating people were dying. I cross-examined him further because he was also on this conference call and he remembers Mr. Stefan, yes, talking about suicides, but also talking about the Medical Post ran a big story. And they were saying, you know, Canadians are in severe angst, to use their words, because they can't access EM Power Plus. This is now, you know, a third party reporter. And he says, you know, I didn't look in to verify this story. Wouldn't allow him to make any changes. And he says, you know what? It didn't alarm me that my enforcement actions could be leading to deaths and hospitalizations because I didn't have first-hand knowledge. Can you get your head around this mindset? Could you imagine denying Canadians product when people are telling you you're causing deaths, but it's not relevant? Now this is happening in 2003 into 2004, and there's been a very troubling court decision development in January of this year where the court basically found that all of this wasn't relevant also. So when the shipment is seized, True Hope started a federal court action, and True Hope wanted the court to basically say, look it, this seizure was unconstitutional. Our Constitution, Charter of Rights, Section 7, guarantees us the right to life, liberty, and security of the person. And courts have interpreted that as also the right to make treatment decisions of your choice and have access to treatments that you rely on for serious conditions. And the court has also said, before the state can take these things away, you have to have an opportunity to be heard. And so we were asking the court to say, well, these seizures were unconstitutional, and asking the court to find this seizure power to also be unconstitutional. Because the seizure power in the Food and Drug Act, a Health Canada inspector can seize if they believe that an offense has taken place. It could be a labeling violation. In this, it could be no Health Canada approval they can seize, they don't have to report it to a court, nothing, they can seize and hang on to it. And there's no recourse. They, they don't take the risk of the seizure into account and they don't have to give it back. And we were asking the court to say, you can't have a seizure power of vital health products that doesn't take into account the risk of the seizure and doesn't give people the opportunity to voice their concerns and get their product back. And so we asked the court all of this and the court said, I'm not looking at this. And just so you know, we were asking the court to find, as a matter of fact, that Health Canada caused deaths. The, all of the evidence I spoke to you about was before. In fact, there was way more evidence in front of the court. We had you know, people who actually were affected and felt endangered. We had Health Canada had almost 800 notes taken by people answering calls to Health Canada, people begging for their lives. It was just, you can't read through the evidence and not get emotionally upset. And we're asking the court, to find as a fact Health Canada caused deaths, to find as a fact that they just terrorized thousands of people. And the court says, no, I'm not looking at that evidence, it's not relevant. And used a very narrow procedural reasoning for this. The court said, you don't have standing. So, and I'll, I'll explain what that means. So, the parties 